All right, um, I'll bring Hillary in now, but it's some breaking news at the moment, so I'll break that with you. Hillary, welcome to the show. Good morning, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Michael. Okay, here we go. Um, first of all, uh, Fair Go is definitely going to be, Television New Zealand have confirmed that they are definitely getting rid of Fair Go. Uh, so that was out for consultation, do you remember? Um, so they're definitely going to be getting rid of it. That's been confirmed this morning, the staff have been advised. Plus, they did a midday and a tonight news, um, but they're both going as well. So, television, and also re-news, um, which is something that was aimed at kids, which I've never even seen, but that has been confirmed as going. Sunday staff, they will learn their fate tomorrow. So, that's the News and Current Affairs flagship. Uh, was it 7.30, 8.30? 8.30 on a... Was it 7.30? What comes first? Is the country calendar at 7 and then... Hillary, is it Sunday? Do you, do you watch it? I used to watch it. Don't I watch don't. it anymore. I thought it came, the news that that thing came directly after at seven, but I don't know. No, I, I think Country it. Calendar goes first at seven, yeah. um, which is still worth the watch, I have to say. Can I just say? Still worth the watch yeah. after 40 odd years. But um, Sunday came, I think it's 7 30. I think it goes 7 30, 8 30. Oh. The thing was, it was always three um, sort of. Um, sort of items and the one the usually the primary one they did a very good one this time last year on um, the floods uh, and, and Cyclone Gabriel and particularly the aftermath yeah. in, um, in Gisborne and Hawke's Bay very 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 good the best I've ever seen it was it was straight up there um, but they used to take they, they would then go and grab one from sort of 60 minutes do you remember that 60 minutes well the thing about media, yeah, is that unlike other places, it's no point just like you think bike tracks are a good idea and you say to people, if we had them, would you use them or do you use them and things. With the media, you, you know who's watching it. And if they're not watching it, it's no good them saying, oh, look, I might watch it if you only had it there for me. Uh. They've got very definite... Um, ideas about who is actually using their product, as it were. Yep. Um, now, the other thing is um, David Seymour this morning, and as given the truancy announcement, so as you'll be aware, there were nine targets that Christopher Luxon announced uh, yesterday. Yes. Um, some of them quite good, some are a bit mm, woolly, but hey, if you don't have a target, you'll never get there. Um and one of them was to do a student attendance. Now, that was taken um, in much more detail this morning at a press conference uh, at Cardinal McKeefery School in Wellington. Uh, Prime Minister Christopher Lux and the Associate Education Minister David Seymour uh, have floated the idea of fines for parents who take their kids out of school because they want a cheaper airfare to Fiji in the last week of term. Now, I've got to be honest with you, David Seymour's playing with fire here. Uh, what do you think? <clears throat> well, I think he's trying to say that the um, he's not just attack, attacking poor people who can't be asked getting their kids to school. He's attacking rich people who choose to take their kids out of school. But unless the fine was more than the reduction in the cost of going to Fiji, he's on a loser there. I mean, well, it, it's just that I don't know how they'd find that information out. Like, for example, I'll give an example. I would no more think of, um, uh, listen, I think it's a great idea. So if I could find a cheap airfare for me and the kids and we could go and spend uh, a week in Fiji out of school, in school term, I'd be there tomorrow. Okay, so let's just think that one through. What am I going to tell the school? I'm not going to tell them I'm taking them to Fiji, am I? How are you going to track me going to uh, Fiji? Yeah, I think it's, as I say, I think it's just because he wants to know that he's not just picking on poorer people, although the less money you have, the more that change in Well, that's just the next thing I was going to say. The kind of different. person that can take their kids to Fiji for a week in the school, in the, in the winter terms, Hillary, I don't think their children are likely to be suffering too much at school just quietly. What do you think? No, I don't think so. And I think you'd just sit there and say, even if you just put up your hand and said, I'm taking them out of school, find me. Then you'd say the fine's 100 bucks for the three of them and the reduction in cost 
for me to go out of the school holidays is um, 600 bucks, and quite frankly. And in any case, I don't think they were learning anything that important. I don't... That the commitment for people to have their kids at school is likely to come from them thinking that that week of schooling is really important. And if you found a parent recently who would hand on heart say that they think any week of schooling pretty much, apart from one where they're doing an exam, is going to have any effect on their kids at all. Um, yes, I, listen, I've never had any sympathy with school principals on this either. Uh, school principals get shirty about this too because parents do it throughout New Zealand. It's become almost a part of our culture that if we've got some money, we will head over, particularly in winter, during the non-school holiday weeks for a family holiday on either the Gold Coast or Fiji or the Cook Islands or somewhere where we can all be together and have a nice holiday and not suffer the ruinous expense of Air New Zealand uh, raping and pillaging us on a daily basis. Um, it's almost a rite of passage, isn't it, if you've got a bit of money? Yeah, and I think um, they're not... There's no principles really involved behind this. Um, I've had kids, and I don't know whether you have, but I've certainly had... I've got three daughters, and at least one and probably two have been daughters that any day they didn't attend, attend school at some parts of their time was a good day for the teachers. They'd have been happy for me <laughs> to have a kid school. Oh, I can believe you that. Know, and, there's, and there's clearly um, part of the reason why parent um, teachers aren't as committed as you might think to have, their, have the kids at school is that they must heave a sigh of relief when kids don't turn up, some of them. But it's got to be easier to teach 20 motivated kids who've turned up than to teach 35, including those five absolute rat bags who you can't, you know, you have to give all your attention to and you can't teach anyway. So they're not that keen on all the kids coming to school. They're probably no. more keen on the other one of my kids coming to school because they quite like having her in the class, you know. <laughs> well, but, but the other thing is, um, like, so I've just, somebody's just said, some parents just take the piss though. My wife, who's a primary school teacher, has kids that are constantly taking kids overseas holidays, some up to two months. Um, I still go... Some kids go on boats, you know, take yeah, yeah. kids on boats that's right. for three years. Yeah, th so. that's right. But I still go this Pretend way. Pretend they're homeschooling them. Yeah, well, there's the issue. I'm, and that's exactly the point that I'm trying to make. If there was a correlation between taking your kids out of school, your kids being truant and not learning, I'd sort of get that. Like when you do your testing and they are below the reading level and mum and dad have been taking them out of truancy testing, uh, taking them out of for holidays, I might have some sympathy. But I'll tell you what, if you try and find me and I've taken my kids and they're learning above average or well above average in reading, writing, and arithmetic at year eight, I'm going to get a bit shooty, I'm going to have to say, mm -hmm. because I'm going and to like say... We've got, yeah, we've, carry on. We've got a grandchild who um, is in what we would have used to call an extension class. I don't, can't remember what they call it. Yeah. But the reason he's, he's in it one day a week, intermediate level, and the reason he is allowed to be in it for generally, is because they think in the other four days he can learn what the teachers want to teach him. Yeah. So he's smart enough to learn it in four days a week. So he yep. has one day a week where he gets together with ones from a variety of intermediate schools and they have a bit more fun doing extension things. Yeah. But it's predicated on that idea that in four days he can learn five days worth of work. And yep. that would be true for most kids at the higher levels. Yep. That that's the case. Yep. So don't mm. get too precious about whether they're learning. No, I wouldn't get too precious and either. And the other thing is you're now treating people differently and David Seymour has made that error this morning as well. I'll, I'll quote to you what he says. Um, during his press conference, he said some people were sending their kids to work instead of school because they have no money, okay? And he freely admitted that. He then said, quote, others are not sending their kids to school because they do have enough money but they want to get a cheaper airfare to Fiji in the last week of term. In those two cases, there's going to be a different approach from the government. And he goes on to say, 
Finding somebody with no money is not going to make the boat go faster. But if it's more of a case of won't than can't, that's when a fine is potentially the right thing to do. You see? So I, I'm going to penalise you. Sorry? Yeah. I mean... Yes. I think it's just... Um, I don't even care, but I don't know why... Yeah, I know why you're trying to defend him, but I don't know why he's even playing this game. No, you I'm know. I'm just saying... I, I'm not saying I'd play this particular card, but I think it's... A, I, I think it's a red herring for all the education things that they're generally doing, really. Um, Craig's just said, this is a brilliant... Uh, Craig, you're a bright man. Craig's just said, yeah, what about schools overseas rugby trips or cultural overseas trips? Oh, there's a, there's a classic yeah. case. See? And that's all about whether the teachers want them there or whether the teachers care about whether they're at school this week or not, rather than whether the parents are. And the parents have equally the right to decide that they think it, that it's more important whatever else they're doing, just like... So, so yeah, he's on a ride to nowhere. Yeah, he is. I'm just so saying, I sort of understand a yeah, and I said, I wouldn't bother. Off it, and he needs to get off it really quick. Um, now, listen, just, just before we just carry on else. to what... Yeah, yeah, carry on. Uh, just before we carry on to that, <laughs> yesterday yeah. um, the annual trust survey and the news media came out and... Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I got a email from the editor of the um, Otago Daily Times, which was almost out instantly after that, um, Paul lauding the fact yeah. it, you you would have heard that lauding the fact that um, it was the most trusted newspaper in New Zealand. Now it was the most trusted news outlet in New Zealand. Um, do you think he should carry on that argument? Uh, blah, 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 blah. He's just. No, not really. He's um, proud of himself, uh, not that that's necessarily anything to do with him, but for um, being the best of a bad lot, or one of the best of a bad lot. Yes. <laughs> um, it's still a bad lot. And it's a very the bad only lot. Reason, the only way you keep striving is to understand that it's a bad lot and keep striving to be um, more connected to people and to, um, it's not to be proud of, really. No. I don't know. And the mm. reason you got that is you're a subscriber. I know. Mm, I know. 